everyone. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the uh, the uh, cells. And uh, what we have discussed is that the cell is the structure and the functional unit of the life. In the previous two lectures, we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell and uh, as well as the eukaryotic cell in the Within the prokaryotic cell, we discuss about the different parts of the bacterial cells. We talk about the flagella. We discuss about the genetic material of the bacterial cell. And we also have discussed about the uh, cell wall. And we also discuss very briefly about the gram staining. And uh, then the in the previous lecture, we discuss about the uh, eukaryotic cells and uh, what we have taken is we have taken the two eukaryotic cells, the plant cell as well as the animal cells. And we, we discuss about the several types of differences between the plant cell as well as the animal cell. And uh, subsequent to that, we discuss about the cytosol, we discuss about the, uh, the, the nucleus, we discuss about the mitochondria. So in the previous lecture, we, we started our discussion about the animal cell. And within the animal cell, uh, we discuss about the three organelles. We discuss about the cytosol, we discuss about the nucleus, and then we also discuss about the mitochondria. In each nucle in each of these organelles, we discuss about their uh, mechanism, their role in the cell cellular physiology, and uh, then we also discuss about the uh, different types of uh, structural uh, details of that particular organelles and so on. So now in today's lecture, we are going to start discussing about the some more organelles from the eukaryotic cell. Uh, so let's start today's lecture. So the first uh, 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 organelle, what we are going to start discussing about the chloroplast. So chloroplast is present in the plant cell and it is completely absent in the animal cell except that it is also present in euglena which is considered to be a primitive uh, animal uh, cell because the euglena has the two uh, abilities to synthesize the food uh, and it also can have the ability to trap its uh, prey and it also can be able to take the food from the external sources. So chloroplasts which are found in the plant, algae and the other lower invertebrates animals such as euglena. Contrasting to the mitochondria, chloroplast has the outer membrane and inner membrane and then the light pigment containing innermost thylakoid membrane. So what you see here is this is a typical uh, structure of the chloroplast. What you see here is it has the outer membrane, then it has the inner membrane and in, inside the this inner membrane you have this uh, thylakoid membrane. So these thylakoid membranes are uh, actually containing the light pigments. The outer membrane is uh, porous to the small molecule but the protein or the large molecules are transported by the TOC. The TOC is stand for the translocation locon on the outer chloroplast membrane complexes. So uh, similar to the mitochondria if you remember the mitochondria is having the porins right which are allowing the proteins or even small molecule which are of lower than small 5000 Dalton compared to here also the outer membrane is porous to the small molecule but it is not porous to the large large protein or to the uh, and that although large protein has to be moved through the uh, facilitated transfer the movement of material of pass through the outer membrane enters into the inner membrane through the another complex which is called as the TIC which is called as the translocon onto the inner chloroplast membrane. So this is the TOC which is present onto the translocon which is present onto the outer chloroplast membrane whereas the TIC which is present on is a tra translocon which is the present onto the inner chloroplast membrane. Uh, in between the outer and the inner membrane is the intermembranous space which is filled with the liquid and the liquid uh, the inner uh, inner membrane of the chloroplast further folds into the flattened membrane system such as the thylakoid. So 
this is just a simple uh, this is the structure wise the chloroplast is also following the similar kind of structure what is being present in the uh, in the mitochondria if you recall the inner membrane in the mitochondria is getting folded and it is forming the cristae and all other kind of structures whereas in the case of chloroplast it is actually forming the thylakoid membrane so these uh, thylakoid membranes are actually containing the photosynthetic pigments and these pigments are actually being responsible for harvesting the sun uh, energy and that's how that energy can be utilized for the uh, dark reactions. So the, uh, let's understand about the uh, photosynthetic pigments. So the photosynthetic machinery such as the light absorbing pigments and the electron carriers and the ATP synthesizing machinery is present onto the inner membrane as a integral protein complexes. So these are the thylakoid membrane where you have the integral membrane proteins and all these integral membrane proteins are actually having the uh, complexes which are responsible for the light absorbing complexes like the PS1 as well as the PS2 and then it also has the electron carriers like the uh, cytochrome C and other kinds of electron carriers like the Q uh, electron carriers and then it has the ATP synthesizing machinery similar to the mitochondria. So it also has the ATP synthase which also going to participate into the ATP productions. Thylakoid membranes are arranged into a stack of coins which are called as the granum. So all these thylakoid membranes, so this is inner layer is actually being folded into the thylakoid membrane and then these thylakoid membranes are stacked to each other right they will be stacked one up to other and that's how they are actually going to form a coin like structure and that coin like structure is called as the granum these granums are actually going to contain the uh, the uh, these light absorbing pigments, electron carriers and the ATP synthesizing machinery. The granum throughout the chloroplast are connected by a tubule to share the material. So these granums are present in a chloroplast. So you see that if you have this like a chloroplast, so the inner membrane is actually going to fold to form one set of granum then it is going to be connected and then it is going to form the another set of granum and then it is going to be connected and it will form the third layer of granum. So these molecules are going to be connected to the uh, tubules and that's how they are actually be able to share the material between the different granums. The overall structure of the chloroplast is similar to the mitochondria but it has few significant structural and biochemical differences. For example, the thylakoid membrane contains the photosynthetic green color pigment which is called as the chlorophyll. Uh, so let's discuss uh, some more about the uh, function and the major function of the chloroplast is that it is actually going to be participate into the reaction which are called as the photosynthesis. What the photosynthesis mean is that photosynthesis is a is a is a, is a very simple uh, complex structure. Right? Photosynthesis means you have to do the synthesis, and you are going to utilize the energy from the uh, you are going to utilize the light energy, right? Which means you are going to use the light energy to synthesize. So that is called as the photosynthesis. So let's see how the photosynthesis is happening. So photosynthesis is a assimilation reaction involving the carbon dioxide and water to produce the sugar in the presence of solar energy or the photons to catalyze the fusion reactions. So this is the uh, typical um, uh, photosynthesis reactions where you have the carbon dioxide, water and then you also require the energy from the sun and that is actually going to be combined to give you a, uh, the sugar and it also going to give you the oxygen. So uh, that sugar can be uh, utilized for the uh, for the plants for its own uh, growth and as well as this sugar can be stored in the form of fruits which actually we are going to which are, which other animals or other organisms are going to consume. The photosystem present onto the thylakoid membrane consists of the two photosystem. You have the photosystem 1 which is called as the PS1 and then you also have the photosystem 2 which is called as the PS2. Now these two photosystems are working in accordance with each other so that the electrons or the light energy what they are going to uh, absorb from the sun is actually going to be utilized for the, uh, for the generation of the ATP. 
so the, the so the purpose of the photosynthesis is that it is actually going to be used for uh, synthesis of the uh, two uh, molecules it is going to be utilized to synthesize the atp and it is also going to be utilized for the reducing equivalent which is called as the nadph this atp is going to be utilized is going to be synthesized by the molecule which is called as the atp synthase whereas the nadph is actually going to be formed by the electron transport chain or the electron transport system so the p and both of these uh, molecules the generation of both of these molecule it requires the energy and that energy it is going to get from the sunlight so ps2 is actually going to absorb the photon from the solar uh, energy to excite the electron to the higher energy state and catalyze the water breakdown into the proton and oxygen so this is what it is going to happen so the first uh, complex what is going to respond to the sunlight is actually the ps2 and ps2 is actually going to take up the sunlight and that's how it is actually going to uh, catalyze the breakdown of the water which is called as the uh, water lysis and that it is going to generate the proton as well as the oxygen this electron pass through with the and it also going to have the electron so the electron which are going to be produced during this water lysis is actually going to be passed through from the multiple electron carriers and during this electrons are exported out of the thylakoid membrane into the lumen so this is what you see here it's a, it's going to do the photolysis of the water that is actually going to generate the proton as well as the oxygen and on the other hand the electrons which are going to be excited from the ps2 are actually going to be carry forward throughout the lumens and throughout the, uh, the thylakoid and that's how it is also going to be uh, utilized the proton pass through the atp synthase and the return back into the stroma to generate the atp so what happen is that the eight proton are actually going to be accumulated onto the uh, this side and then they will actually going to pass through to the uh, atp synthase and that's how the it is actually going to generate the atp into the lumen the electrons from the ps2 is eventually being received by the ps1 and when excited under the absorbing proton from the sun light to high energy state so that's why the proton the electrons are going to be uh, passed through the different electron carriers and then it will reach to the ps1 and at the ps1 they will reach to the ps1 then again the ps1 is actually going to excite, again receive the sunlight and then that's how it is actually going to excite these electrons and ultimately these electrons are going to be utilized for production of the nadph the energy associated with these electrons are used to generate the nadph into the stroma so in the stroma what you are going to generate you are going you are going to generate the two molecules you are going to generate the nadph and you are also going to generate the atp so atp and the nadph both are actually being utilized for the dark reactions hence as a result of photosynthesis the solar energy is being trapped by the photosynthesis apparatus to generate the two molecules one is atp which is the energy currency and the nadph which is called as the reducing equivalent into the lumen both of them are being used to run the calvin cycle to assimilate the uh, environmental uh, carbon dioxide to form the sugar now this is what is going to happen right so this these two molecules are going to be utilized so the purpose of the atp so photosynthesis is that it also it actually want to synthesize the atp and the nadph and then these two molecules are going to be supplied into the stroma where they have the enzymes for the calvin cycle and that's how the calvin cycle is going to run into the c4 plants and that's how it is actually going to uh synthesize the sugar molecule so the, ultimately the carbon dioxide is going to be fixed by the plants into the sugar molecules and it is actually going to oxygen that oxygen is going to be used by the uh, animals for respirations and this sugar is actually going to be used by the plant for its own growth and the extra sugar is going to be stored in the form of fruits 
and that also is going to be that is going to be consumed by the other animals now next move on to the uh, next organelles so the next organelle is the organelles of the vesicular trafficking you know that the every cell just like as we are also having a very very good trafficking system right so that the, you can you know that the, what is the destination of the this particular road right if you want to go from for example if you want to go from guwahati to mumbai you know that how how what will be the uh, roads i should take to reach the mumbai or suppose i want to go to the delhi or kolkata or any other place right similarly if you want to uh, distribute the um, material within the cell then also it also has the vesicular trafficking system so there are organelles which are responsible for distributing the uh, distributing the uh, material within the plant within the cell right this uh, could be uh, for the plant cell or it could be for the animal cell this material either could be the food particles or it could be the signaling molecules right so it this uh, uh, this could be anything right so the main function of these organelle which are up, actually the organelle which are part of the vesicular trafficking is to manage the distribution of the material whether it is a food particle or the the protein which are be a part of the signal transductions throughout the cell there are three different organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulums golgi apparatus and the lysosomes which coordinately work together to maintain the vesicular transport of the material across the cell eukaryotic cell take up the solid material from the outside the cell through a process which is called as the endocytosis uh, so if it is taking up the solid material then it is called as the endocytosis whereas the uptake of the liquid is known as the pinocytosis which means during the nutrition during when the cell is taking up the nutrition it can actually take the uh, the the particulate matter that process is called as the endocytosis if it taking the liquid for example if it taking the water or any other kinds of vitamins and minerals and all those kind of molecule then it will be called as the pinocytosis similarly the material is secreted out of the cell which is called as the exocytosis so so inside entry is called as the endocytosis if the cell is producing some by products which are not good for the cell then it is also going to throw the cells right and that process is called as the exocytosis in addition the intravascular system delivers the protein synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum to the different organelles apart from this two these three processes like two processes where the cell are actually going to receive the material if it is solid then it is called as the endocytosis if it is liquid then it is called as the pinocytosis and if it is a by product then it is called as the exocytosis apart from these three uh, moment of the uh, material distribution of the materials you can also have the distribution of the material to the different organelles for example you know that the uh, all the proteins are being synthesized either inside the endoplasmic reticulums or inside the cytosol right but these uh, proteins probably may not be required for that particular organelle it may be required for the lysosome it may be required for the mitochondria it may be required for the chloroplast so that movement is also be a responsibility of these organelles which are part of the vesicular trafficking during the endocytosis the material present outside the cell binds to the cell surface to the cell surface receptor and trapped it in a membranous structure which is called as the endosome the endosomal vesicles are fuses with the lysosomes to form the endosome in late endosome with the help of the lysosomal enzyme material is digested and then the endosome is fused with the golgi bodies and deliver the content for the further distributions in the similar manner during secretions the vesicular originate from the golgi bodies and fuse with the plasma membrane to release the content so this is what you see here the here i we have shown the all the three processes one is the endocytosis so if it is a food particle it is going to be take up inside uh, it will be going to engulf right and then it is actually going to be first present into the early endosomes these early endosomes when they will fuse with the lysosome what is going to be present in the cytosol 
then it is actually going to form the late endosome and then these late endosomes are actually going to be fused with the Golgi complexes and then the Golgi is going to process this particular uh, material what is being taken up from the outside and that is how it is actually going to be delivered to the rough endoplasmic reticulum or it is actually going to be given to the other organelles. Same is true for the uh, if suppose the uh, something has to be secreted out like for example if something is has to be exocytosis or something has to be secreted out then that material is going to be come out in the form of the vesicles and then these vesicles were eventually going to fuse to the plasma membrane and then this material is going to be go out. Uh, same is true for the exocytosis where the, um, the, the Golgi is going to pack this material in the vesicles and then these vesicles are going to fuse with the plasma membrane and then it is actually going to release this particular content. Now let us uh, study the, uh, these organelles individually and understand their uh, functions. So the first organelle which is be a part of the vesicular trafficking is the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is nothing but the roads which are present inside the cell. Right. So, what you see here is the endoplasmic reticulum is present just outside the nucleus and it is forming a road like structure. Right. It is forming a road throughout the cell. So, if you want to send a material which is supposed for the mitochondria, then these roads are actually going to go to the mitochondria and that is how it is actually can deliver that material to the mitochondria. So, the vesicular network starting from the nuclear membrane and is spread throughout the cytosol constitutes the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two different types of endoplasmic reticulum which are present in the cell. You have the rough plasmoplasmic reticulum which is actually having the protein machinery attached to it which is ribosomes. So, you have the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is having the ribosomes which are attached to it. So, because of this ribosomes they are their appearances look like as a uh, rough endoplasmic or rough surfaces. So, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosome attached to it and it gives the rough appearance whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is devoid of the ribosomes. Protein synthesis on the ribosome attached to RER is sorted into the three different categories such as integral membrane proteins, proteins for the secretions and the protein destinated for the other organelles. So, the protein what is being synthesized inside the endoplasmic reticulum actually falls under the three different categories. The number one is the protein which is a part of the integral membrane proteins, number two the protein which is for the secretions and the number three the protein which is for the different organelles. Protein are synthesized with the N signal peptide and these signal peptides are recognized by the signal recognition particle on their target organelles. So, the protein which are destinated for the different organelles are synthesized with a signal peptide. Signal peptide is nothing but kind of a address right. So, they are actually having an address. So, you can imagine that if I want to post a letter right from here IIT Guwahati to IIT Madras then what I will do is I will take the letter right I will have a letter and, and then I will write an address on this right. Similarly, if I have a vesicle and if I want to send this vesicle to the mitochondria what I will do is I will put the mitochondrial localization sequence right and that is what is called as the signal peptide. You remember that when we were talking about the last time when we were talking about the mitochondria that the porin will not allow the entry of any part proteins which is beyond the 500 Dalton. But if he, the protein is of beyond the 500 Dalton, then that protein has to have a mitochondrial localization sequence. So, you can put a tag like or you put a signal, then this vesicle will go to that destinations. Okay? For example, if a protein is synthesized with a signal peptide for the mitochondria, it will attach to the signal recognition particle and the receptor onto the outer membrane to deliver the protein. The, the proteins without any signal peptide tags remain in the cytosol. So, any protein which does not have any kind of tag is actually going to remain within the cytosol. Now, what will be the function of the endoplasmic reticulum? So, the first function is that this, it is involved in the synthesis of the steroid hormone within the gonad cells. 
then it is required for the detoxification. Remember that the endoplasmic reticulum is a part of the vesicular transmitting, so it actually can do the exocytosis and that is how it is actually going to participate into the detoxifications. Then it also can be do a, uh, calcium sequestrations and that is how it actually can have the calcium signaling. So, if you are the calcium signaling, the endoplasmic reticulum is actually going to release the calcium into the cytosol and that is how it is actually going to start the calcium signaling. Then it is also important for the synthesis of the protein, phospholipids and the carbohydrates. It is possible for the protein sorting for the different organelles and it is also responsible for the protein modifications such as glycosylations. So, so some of these things uh, we are very very complicated and we are not going to discuss. For example, the glycosylation itself is a, is a big topic. So, that we are not covering in detail in this particular uh, course. Then we talk about the next uh, organelle and the next organelle is the Golgi bodies. The Golgi bodies are actually being first visualized by a metallic stain which is called as the Golgi stain. Uh, invented by the Camellio Golgi and it is made up of, of the, so, so Golgi is made up of, of the flattened disc like cisterni arranged in a stacked manner to give three distinct zones. So, this is what you see, this is the Golgi bodies where you have the disc like uh, structure, so disc like structure which are attached to each other, right and that is how it is going to have a Golgi bodies. You have the three different zone within the Golgi bodies, you have the cis zone, you have the medial zone and then you have the trans zone. So, this is the starting point, you have the cis zone. So, cis phase is actually receiving the material or vesicle from the endoplasmic reticulum. So, this side with the side from which it actually receives the material from the ER is called as the cis phase or the cis cisterni. Whereas, the middle portion is called as the medial Golgi where in medial Golgi you are actually going to have the all the processing, it is actually going to have the covalent modification with the sugar, right. So, it is going to do the uh, different types of uh, glycosylations and all those kind of modifications. And then the top portion what you see here is actually the trans Golgi, that trans Golgi is actually is the face of the Golgi towards the plasma membrane and this uh, site is actually going to release the sorted vesicles whether these vesicles are going to be for the uh, to for different organelles or whether this is for the plasma membrane which means whether these vesicles are for the secretory pathway or whether these vesicles for the other mitochondria and for their destinated organelle or to the plasma membrane so these are the functions of the golgi bodies you have the protein sorting so protein in the medial Golgi, the proteins, so, so it will actually receive the uh, protein what is being synthesized by the endoplasmic reticulum. Then that protein are going to be sorted within this uh, medial Golgi and then by, uh, by sorting these proteins are actually going to be modified by differentially, right. They are going to be tagged with the different types of uh, destinations. For example, it can be a mitochondrial localization sequence, it could be chloroplast localization sequence, it could be uh, some other kind of localization sequences. Even for the Golgi itself, if Golgi want to get some protein, it also has to put a Golgi localization sequences and ER localization sequences. Although this protein is coming from the ER, but it cannot retain in within the ER. It has to be received from the Golgi bodies. So, all the material will go into the Golgi, then it will be going to be sorted out and then it is going to be tagged with the particular, uh, you know, particular address and then subsequently it is actually going to be delivered to that particular organ. For example, you you know right you if you have if you are in a home right if you are in a, in your home and if you send a, a envelope right or if you send a letter right what happened this letter first go to the gpo right then from gpo it is actually will go to the different uh, 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 you know postal address i right? or the, the, this will go to the postal office right from the postal office it will go to the the postman right and then postman is actually going to deliver it to the destination right so same is true for the vesicular trafficking right you if you are in the home this is actually the er right 
so where the synthesis is happening then what will happen this is your uh, letter right so this is a protein right so this is a protein now this protein will first come to the gpu gpu is nothing but the golgi bodies right now from the golgi bodies it is actually going to be sorted right it will actually going to be sorted as per the destination for example there are parcels which will go to the mumbai there are parcels which are going to the delhi there are parcels which will go to the you know um, kolkata or other cities so at this point it is actually going to be sorted right and it actually going to have some kind of stamp right that okay this will go to the kolkata this will go to the mumbai this will go to the delhi and something like that so then it will reach to the uh, the delhi office right and then from delhi office it will be given to the postman and then postman will actually going to give you the destinations so this is the very important this is a golgi bodies right so even if the uh, the letter has to be come back again right it has to be come back again to the your home for example then also the gpu has to tag accordingly then only it will come back for example if you are sending a letter to your neighbor right it will not go directly from your place to that neighbor it will go through this process it will go to that particular postal office and then it will come back to your that neighbor house right same is so that is the function of the this vesicle the, uh, the organelle what is uh, involved in the vesicular trafficking uh, apart from that the golgi is also involved in the proteolysis so where it is also going to degrade the proteins now we are talk about the third organelle which is also be responsible or be a part of the vesicular trafficking and that organelle is called as the lysosomes lysosome is an organelle which is discovered by the d do and they are popularly known as the suicidal bag because the lysosome is filled with the different types of hydrolytic enzymes and its uh, inner uh, liquid is uh, very very uh, acidic so due to their role in the autophagy autophagy means eating yourself okay so autophagy is means eating yourself which means if you if you say you might have seen uh, many people who are chewing their nails right that is autophagy actually that is that you are chewing your own body so same is true for the cell also when the cell does not ca cannot produce the enough energy because it has to you know it's not getting the nutrition from outside then what will what will start doing is for example if, if suppose it has the 300 copies of uh, some organelle right so what it will do is it will start utilizing the 100 copies so the it will actually going to be work with the 200 or copies of that particular organelle and the 100 copies it will going to you know destroy and that material it is actually going to use for its nutrition that process is called as the autophagy but this is a societal uh, pathway right and that's why the lysosomes are known as the societal bags uh, autophagy is a cellular process probably operate in cells during starvation to meet their energy requirements lysosomal lumen is extremely acidic and contains the proteases cytosolic uh, cytolytic enzymes to degrade the ingested material so if you have a lysosome and if you give any pro any molecule whether it is a protein whether it is a dna whether it is the bacteria viruses any kind of molecule it is actually going to degrade and it will going to generate the proteins or peptides that's why the lysosome has very well defined function it will degrade it will degrade the ingested food material for delivery throughout the vesicular systems so if you uh, you know if you take the food particle from outside it is going to be delivered to the lysosomes and that lysosome is doing to what is going to do it is going to degrade that food particles so that it would be uh, present in the form of the simple molecules and that simple molecules it is going to deliver it has also been uh, uh, present in the defense cells and it is going to work as a defense organelle also so it is actually going to destroy the pathogenic bacteria viruses and uh, yeast uh, fungi and all kind of pathogenic bacteria and then it is also going to degrade the old protein so the major part of the lysosome is that it is actually going to recycle 
the materials. It is going to recycle the uh, cellular materials and as well as it is going to recycle the outside material. So if there is a bacteria, it, if it goes into the cell, it is actually going to destroy that particular cell. So that bacteria will be uh, given to the uh, into the you know the to the lysosomes by the uh, a very well defined process right and that anyway we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the cellular processes right when we are going to talk about the phagocytosis that time we are going to discuss in detail how the uh, bacteria or viruses or all these infectious organisms are going to be delivered to the lysosome and then how the lysosome is actually degrading these bacteria. Now let's move on to the next organelle and the next organelle is called as the plasma membrane. So plasma membrane is nothing but the external uh, membrane and the plasma membrane is made up of, of the two, part, uh, two molecules. It is made up of, of the lipids and it is made up of, of the proteins. So you know that the protein, uh, the lipid has a head and then it also has the uh, aliphatic chains right uh, hydrophobic chain and these uh, head molecules which are called as is actually the polar and the these uh, chains are hydrophobic and because of this particular type of amphipathic uh, character all these uh, heads are actually arranging themselves and the lipids are the this uh, chains are actually arranged inside so if you say this so if, if you if you put this under the aqueous environment it is actually going to form a membrane like this okay and that's how the the plasma membrane is made up of of the lipids as well as the proteins so what you see here is this ball like structures are actually the uh, the polar head groups and what you see here is this tail like structure is the hydrophobic tails and they will be arranged and sandwiched that so they will make a sandwich like structures and within these sandwich structures you are going to see the different types of proteins these proteins could be the integral proteins or they could be peripheral proteins so what you see here is this is the integral protein because this is a, a present throughout the plasma membrane whereas this is what you see is actually an integral protein which is either be present onto the outer surface or to the inner surface. Apart from that, the plasma membrane is also going to have the different types of receptors like for example, this is a receptor, this is a receptor, it can also have the channels like it can have the transporter as well as the channels. These transporters and channels are actually going to use for delivery of the food particles or delivery of the small molecules. Apart from that, it also could have the different types of the molecules which are being attached onto the lipids membrane and that is actually going to a part of the antigenistic antigenic role right so they are going to be the antigenic molecules which are going to be attached so these are sugar molecules which are being present on some of these uh, peripheral proteins and that is responsible for giving the antigenic uh, features to this particular plasma membrane now what is the function of the plasma membrane so function of the plasma membrane is that it is actually going to protect the cells from the uh, from the external infections then number two is it is actually be responsible for entry or exit of the molecules right so it is a part of the uh, regulatory system so that it actually will allow the entry and exit of the molecule because the plasma membrane are semi permeable so they will allow some molecule semi permeable uh, so they will be selectively permeable right so they will be selectively uh, permeable and uh, so they will be having a you know some mechanism so that they will be very selective whether they will be allow some molecule to enter or not that is actually going to be decided by the plasma membrane apart from that the plasma membrane is going to have the different types of receptors so they will be actually going to use that for many purpose the receptors could be taking up the for taking up the food for example you can have the receptors uh, which is uh, for the taking up the food for example you can have the ldl receptor so that ldl receptor is going to take up the ldl which is a lipid actually from outside and that ldl receptor is going to take up the ldl and that will be utilized for the cell for its nutrition 
Similarly, you can have the insulin receptor, right? So insulin receptor is not is going to use for uh, detecting the insulin what is present in the blood and that's how it is actually going to lower down the blood glucose. Number three, the receptors are also going to be a part of the defense mechanism. So some of the receptors are going to function as uh, you know the recognition particles or sometimes they are also going to work as a defense me mechanism. So they will be going to sense the external molecules and uh, they are actually going to derive the responses from the cell accordingly. So uh, and apart from that the, uh, the, the plasma membrane also has the transporters. These transporters are actually going to be used uh, for the different types of uh, delivery of the molecules or the delivery of the water or the solutes and the small molecule as well as the big molecules. So overall the, the, the function of the plasma membrane is that it wants to regulate the, the material entry and exit from the cell. So with this uh, we have discussed about the eukaryotic cell, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the differences between the eukaryotic, two different types of eukaryotic cell, we discussed about the plant cell and as well as the uh, animal cell and uh, we also have discussed about the different organelles what are present in the eukaryotic cell. Initially we have discussed about the, uh, the uh, cytosol, then we discuss about the nucleus and we also discuss about the mitochondria and in this particular lecture we have discussed about the chloroplast, then the organelles of the vesicular trafficking system, we discuss about the endoplasmic reticulum, we discuss about the Golgi bodies and, uh, and we also discuss about the lysosomes and at the end we have also discussed about the plasma membrane and its functions. So, with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss uh, about the cell cycle and how the cell is dividing and uh, increasing its number uh, and some more aspects related to the cells. So with this, I would like to in, uh, conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.